Welcome to the GCN Tech Show with me, Alex. And me, Ollie. And this week we've got the new Canyon Speedmax, the Reap Vulcan, new look gravel bikes, an invisible bike stand, your upgrades, the Bike Vault, and our main talking point crossover tech from mountain biking. Let's go. Let's begin with the results of the poll from last week, in which we asked you, would you buy an X Team bike? And pretty overwhelmingly, 75% of you voted yes and said that you would. would Clear you victory. Yeah. I wouldn't buy one because uh, well, I actually sold my team bike before <laughs> I started here, so someone got a nice bargain there. Did they? Yeah. I mean, did you actually ride that bike much this year? Not, not even once, never even put a leg over the thing. So someone's got an absolute steal, whoever bought your yeah, bike. Do yeah. they know it's yours? Yeah, yeah, the guy, <laughs> knew, the guy knew it was mine. Never, the wheel had never even turned around, unfortunately. There you go. Covid. There you go. Right, well, on to our main talking point this week, which is mountain biking tech that's crossed over, and vice versa, I guess. Now, you guys might not know this, but Alex is actually really experienced in mountain biking, having represented GB in both, well, well cyclocross uh, world championships, but also mountain biking world championships as well. So, I mean, so what, what sort of tech do you think really stands out in your mind that's come across from mountain biking to road? Well, as much as sort of road riders probably don't want to admit it, we've actually taken quite a lot of technology from mountain biking across and onto the road. Um, one of the first things that springs to mind are actually tubeless tyres. It was quite a long time ago, back in 2006 I reckon I started using tubeless tyres on the mountain bike, but it was a whopping 10 years later before I started using them on the road. Mm. Part of that was because there just wasn't really the range of tyres available on the road, um, so that obviously limited everyone's choice. And I've even experienced with um, trying to use non-tubeless tyres on the road, but set up as tubeless, although it's something I definitely don't recommend trying at home because you don't want your tyres falling off. Yeah, I think one of the big technological challenges with that though has been trying to design tyres that can cope with the higher pressures on the road than the yeah, on mountain uh, bike. Yeah, on it? mountain bike and you're way down sort of 17 psi at times, obviously the, the bigger the volume of the tyre the much lower pressure you use, so that's one of the big uh, sort of problems that had to overcome on the road was the mm. big high pressures, so. Yeah, something else sticks out in my mind dropper posts yeah right what do you think of that great for mountain biking i'm not sold on the road just yet yeah. but i think you've been doing a bit of research on this as well uh, yeah i think like you can definitely see there's a big application for gravel and, in, and and if i i don't currently have a gravel bike but if i did i'd want a dropper post on it yeah because having you know used dropper posts a, a bit on mountain bikes i can just see how advantageous it would be yeah really um, beneficial on steep descents and stuff and i think that when you look at things like you know this this sort of trend for top tube descending yeah. that roadies do now, you know and Chris Froome and everyone, that'd be so much safer with a dropper post. Yeah, if right, right. instead of balancing on the top tube, mm. you know I think activate the lever, drop a post down, yeah, ready to your, go. Get your weight better distributed on the bike, and it's not a new thing because um, Ivan Basso. He did used to use a drop post at times on his on his Cannondale Super Six back in the day, back like when he the won day. the Giro and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. Maybe it will take off big time on the road soon. Who knows? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I've got another one for you, Ollie, which is one by Chain Rings. Oh, tell me more. Um, not hugely popular on the road bikes, although popular on gravel and cross bikes. Yeah, I mean, there's some specialist applications. Yeah, I, you know, some TT bike specialists are using one ring for make it more aero. Yeah. And then also hill climb bikes, but to keep the weight down, not having a, a double chain set at the front. Yeah, although one by chain rings are sort of almost exclusively used on mountain biking now. It really hasn't quite transferred across the road, but yeah. carrying on with one by chain rings has actually led to the clutch mech design, which is to retain the chain far more securely on the chain rings. And that's also something we've seen cross over onto road and gravel bikes. Yeah, I think we might actually see increased use of one by chain sets in um, in road in the future. Yeah. I think I think it was just I think it has genuinely been held back by the um, the sort of aqua blue saga. Yeah. If I'm honest. Yeah, I don't think that's helped it. Uh, no. Helped it out a lot. No, and I think no. while I don't think the double chain set or the triple chain set will will die anytime soon, I think. I think, yeah, it is something that is going to grow in, in popularity. Yeah, I think there's a definite as, place for it. As manufacturers sort of may refine the system a little bit more for the road rather than just taking a mountain bike concept and just 
plonking it on a road bike. Mm. I think a little bit of refinement, and I think road bikes will have it sorted too. Mm. And a great area of tech that has come from mountain biking across the road has to be disc brakes. And that's an area that I feel has revolutionised road bikes. Yeah, it definitely has. I'm a big fan of disc brakes. And I think a lot of the audience of like the tech show get a bit confused sometimes, see it in the comments, because I, I've you know said in the past how much I love disc brakes and also how much I love rim brakes. And then they think, well, half the time you must be lying because they think it's mutually exclusive, but I don't think it is at all. I like both. And I think there are clear advantages and disadvantages to both systems. Neither of them are perfect. No, there's there's great applications for both. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a place for rim brakes and disc brakes for everybody, whether you don't have to stick to one, do you? So. No. Um, but that, that said, I do agree. I think it is the biggest sort of technological thing that's come from mountain yeah. biking onto road bikes. Yeah. But we've spoken a lot about stuff that has come in that direction. What about stuff that's actually come from road and then gone to mountain bike? Yeah, I, as we've been saying, we've taken a lot from mountain biking, yeah. but mountain bikers have actually taken quite a good amount of technology from road and taken it off road. Yeah. Um, one of the first ones that jumps to mind is actually electronic shifting. DI2. Yeah, DI2. And mm. also um, SRAM's wireless system is now available on mountain bikes. So they've sort of been a bit behind times with uh, electronic <laughs> shifting. I'll tell you another cool one, Ollie, and yeah. that is carbon everything. Um, it wasn't that long ago that mountain bikers would wince at the thought of having carbon on their bikes, just saying, oh, it's too light, it's going to snap. Um, but these days, carbon is actually way lighter and in many cases stronger than their metal counterparts. So. I don't know why mountain bikers were so fussy about that. Yeah, I've noticed mountain bikers getting increasingly preoccupied with weight, yeah. uh, like us roadies, when they haven't been necessarily in the past. And yeah. something else I've noticed, which of oh, aero. Yeah. Right? Mountain bikers, they're starting to like take notice of aero. They are. And they definitely haven't in the past. They wear all those silly baggy outfits. Yeah, I've seen lots of clothes mountain that are too big for them. Racing in skin suits now. Yes. <laughs> oh, mountain bike in a skin suit. I know, I know. Oh, oh. But the thing is, it just makes total sense. Why yeah. would you not? Yeah, it's, it's faster and it's a race. Do you know what? I reckon we should do a thing with GMBM where we get them to do a downhill thing. Yeah. In, in, we aero them up, we get them in a skin suit, we yeah. get a, like a TT helmet on them. Oh, that would be amazing. And then see how much faster they can go. If we like proper air, shoe covers. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Remember that speed gel Lotto Sadal used? Yeah. Was, you know, little speed balls in it, trying to make them a bit faster. Uh, yeah, I reckon. I don't can. know what on earth the mountain bikers would make of that. Oh, I wish you'd do this. It'd be yeah. good. <laughs> Maybe coming up next month. <laughs> yeah. Another thing worth mentioning is power meters. Yeah. I mean, they've been growing massively on the road side of things, but it would have been unthinkable for a mountain biker to use a power meter. Oh, yeah. But increasingly, we are seeing power meters on mountain bikes. And, well, you know, like Quark make mountain bike specific, you know, units now yeah, as well. Do, yeah. So. That is something else. Basically, mountain bikers just get all the nerdy stuff from roadies. Right? Yeah, they they <laughs> they just secretly nerds. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that I've, I've used in the past and mountain bikers have used, although it's not taken off hugely, was tubular tires on mountain bikes. Um, I don't back, remember them being used. Well, it's not. It wasn't massive. Going back quite a few years, we did use tubular tires where we'd actually have to send off mountain bike tires to a company in Belgium called Dugast, and they'd actually cut the tires up and stick them onto a tubular casing. So it was never really quite a, a mass production thing, but it, it tried but a bit why of do fail. You, why do you think they didn't take off? Incredibly expensive and a lot of faff. Mm. Yeah, so eventually tubeless tires just won, didn't they? So. Yeah. That's our list, but it's no means definitive. So let us know in the comments uh, what else you can think of that's crossed over from mountain biking and road. But we, I think we should have a poll, right? Yeah, we should have Would a poll. you like to see us make a video where we make or try to make GMBN aero. I'd love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes or no? Simple answer. Let us know. Time now for hot tech, and we're going to begin this week with the new Canyon Speedmax TT triathlon bike. This is a radical looking machine, and it's said to be eight to nine watts faster than the previous version. Which is it's quite a lot, because the old one was actually pretty quick as it was. Yeah, it does beg the question, like, how have they sort of made it faster? And the big kind of headline uh, is first, well, that it's disc brake only in the new version, and They've done some quite cool things with the, the hydration systems on the bike. So it is, it is you know, primarily a, a triathlon bike, 
and so hydration is really important in like Ironman events. And they've got this really cool collapsible bladder, um, a bit like a sort of camelback type thing, yeah. I guess, that's in the down tube. And it's also got the um, integrated bento box as well, sort of at the front, so you can put all your spares and stuff like that Ooh, in there. Yeah, I mean, triathletes love bento boxes, don't they? They love it. Put all their triathlon gubbins. Spare leotards, flippers. Flippers, snorkel. Yeah, goggles. Yeah, Get, goggles. Oh, you fit all that in yeah. there. Great. Easily. Yeah. There's also a neat storage compartment just above the bottom bracket as well by removing this, this side panel. And in there you can store your inner tubes and your CO2 cartridges and stuff and all your spares, which is really cool because it means that you don't need a separate saddlebag. No, you don't need a saddlebag. Yeah, it keeps things very neat and tidy. And it, it's like what we were talking about earlier. It's like a swatch, isn't it, from a mountain bike? Yeah. That tech coming over again. Simple. Yeah. It's also got the uh, very adjustable cockpit using that monopole design. So yes. That's what we've seen on the Orbea, I think it was. Well, yeah, well, the Orbea Ordu that you may have seen in the three versus one and two versus one videos, yeah. um, that has that sort of monopole tri bar uh, cockpit design. And something we first saw, I think, on the Trek Speed concept uh, back in the day as well. It gives a fantastic amount of adjustability because yeah. that's one of the key things with time trialing and triathlons. Well, I think about triathlons, I yeah. don't know. But it's, it's getting your position dialed in. So the yes. more adjustable it is, the better and makes life easy. Yeah, I think being able to tweak every dimension of your sort of hand position and, and the length of, of the cockpit is crucial on a time trial bike. And it's something that has been on a lot of previous time trial bikes, not as adjustable as you would like, or it's a real faff to do yeah. so. But I think you can see from these graphics that, that Canyon has produced, just how adjustable it is. It's a pretty impressive uh, piece of design. There are three models of the new Speedmax. So you've got the top of the range, high spec layup CFR model, that's the lightest, then the CF SLX, and then a slightly different frame, but much more affordable CF SL model. Uh, this is a slightly different frame, so it has an external bento box that's removable on the top tube, and then a storage box as well uh, that's removable above the bottom bracket. It also has a less sophisticated cockpit for profile design. It's a little bit less aero than the others, according to Canyon. It's a little bit heavier as well, but we're told much more affordable. Yeah, although it is a bit of a travel on bike, really, with especially the hydration and storage systems all incorporated onto it. But we are told there is a UCI legal version on its way too, which will be used by teams such as Movie Star and Arkea Samsung. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing, to yeah. seeing that. Yeah, and they've also made use of the UCI relaxing their ruling on the frame designs with a far more sophisticated fork design. Yeah, you need to see how deep that fork blade is. Yeah. That wouldn't have been UCI legal, no. you know, sort of a couple of years ago. So, cool. Great work. If you'd like to find more information out in more detail about the new Speedmax, then GTN did a cracking first look video of it, so make sure you check that out. And while we're on the subject of triathlon bikes, people are going to accuse us of turning into a triathlon yeah. channel because we've got another one, we've right? We've got the Reap Vulcan. Yes, check this out. That is definitely not UCI no. legal. Yeah, it's a bean bike um, by UK brand Reap. And interestingly, they've bucked the disc brake trend here because it's rim brake. Yeah, I mean, there's some very interesting design ideas and features on this bike. Uh, the first thing that caught my eye, apart from the beam shape, was the tri bars at the front. They've got this very sort of aero integrated shape, the way they sort of like mold onto your arms like a lot of the custom cockpits we've seen the pros use. Although they don't look, at first sight, I might be wrong, but they don't look like they have as much adjustment on them as what we've just seen on the new Speedmax. But another really interesting design idea is if you look at the shape of the frame down by the bottom bracket area, it's specially shaped so that it can sort of sheath and guide the airflow over the front mech and make it more aerodynamic, which yeah. is a really novel and cool idea that I've not seen before. Yeah, they've actually produced a detailed and informative white paper on this bike, which we should probably check out. The biggest thing that, that stood out for me in that white paper they've produced is that they've sort of taken the fork crown and then done some cool things with that and, and redesigned the fork crown to make it you know, significantly more aerodynamic. And the other thing is how much drag a group set actually makes, well the gears actually account for at higher yaw angles on a bike yeah. and they found it was pretty significant and that's why they've taken steps within the design of the frame such as that that sort of shaping of the frame to cover the, the front mech um, to reduce that drag. But yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Very good. Look has updated its gravel bike range with its top spec and lightweight 765 RS to have an update as well as updating the E765. 
It's also introduced a new mid-range 765 for riders on a more reasonable budget. Yeah, that mid-range 765 Gravel is going to be available in two builds, the least expensive of which will feature Shimano 105 and this really nice sort of matte black and gloss black paint job. And it's going to retail in the US, I believe, for $3,000 or £2,500 or uh, €2,700. Euros. Interestingly though, mm. the 765 RS is actually 200 grams lighter than its previous version. Yeah, they reckon they've been able to do that by sort of, well, better understanding how the carbon layup can be applied in a, in a gravel bike, just basically learning from designing the first one. Impressive stuff. Mm. And finally, in hot tech this week, we've got something, right, that I think will really appeal to the GCN tech audience. It's a bit niche, but I think that you guys are that niche. Yeah, and it's, it's called the Shadow Stand. It is an invisible bike stand that fits into your back pocket and now enables you to take beautiful pictures, um, sort of sort of pictures that would be suitable for the bike vault. Yes, ideal. And Shadow Stand, right, they've actually made, they've made us one. It's like a GCN one, which is useful. If you open it up, I'll get it out. Because it's an invisible bike stand. I mean, if it didn't have this bit of GCN logo written on it, it would be completely invisible. You can see if I put it against my hoodie, you can see. It's made from acrylic, but specifically green cast, which is the world's first 100% recycled acrylic, which makes it a bit more expensive than standard acrylic, but I mean, I'm all for anything that's recycled and green. And in case you're wondering where this little invisible gizmo goes, um, you actually position it underneath your, your crank arm axle of your pedal um, on the non-drive side which means you don't have your cranks totally level as you normally would, but... But it's invisible. It's invisible, so there you go. More Hot Tech next week. <laughs> Cha ching It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. Yeah, where you submit pictures or evidence in any form you like of upgrades that you've made to your bikes, equipment or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, which is going to be a GCN water bottle. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, changed it. Anyway, we ran out of caps, we gave them all away. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But first up, the results from last week. We had, if, if you uh, can remember, uh, Spike the Ones Kyoto build versus Shay's refurbished Trek Speed Concept. And the winner, pretty comprehensive, was Shay's Trek Speed Concept, which was a, I mean, it was amazing what he'd done, taken the paint down and then we sprayed it. It looked incredible. Oh. So uh, very well done. And uh, get in contact on Facebook. We'll get the uh, the water bottle out to you. And uh, first up this week, we've got Jason Payne. Okay. Yeah. This is really cool. But one thing is Jason Payne hasn't submitted a huge number of pictures for this. And it is an amazing upgrade, but future reference, if you are submitting your upgrades, please submit like as many pictures as possible. We really want to see like the process um, and it makes you much more likely to win a bottle as well. Uh, but he's got this, um, he says the ANC Halfords team, which was what, back in the like 1985, like Shane Sutton and Malcolm Elliott oh, yeah. rode for them back in the day, cool team. Um, they got him into cycling as a young boy, he says, and he bought a, a, a cheap copy bike from Halfords, and he said he rode it for a year until he crashed it riding down Kirkstone Pass oh. in the Lake District, which is a fast descent. And then he says 30 years later, clinging onto that, he's built a one-to-one -one replica matching everything part for part. He's gone full on like restoration here. Reynolds 531 Pro frame. He's gone for a full Campagnolo record group set. Uh, he's got Col Cobal Colbalto brakes, Campagnolo wheels, a turbo saddle, Chinelli bars, and even like 1980s Coca-Cola water bottles. Check those out. Look better with a GCM bottle on it. Yeah. Um, but this is mega. I mean, that is I, such an awesome like passion project restoration. I'm loving that gold bar yeah. tape as well. Yeah, that is cool actually. Sort of like, yeah. That is, that is awesome, isn't it? Really good. But he's up against something quite hard this week with um, submission from Micah Shearer with um, saying he's commuting 40 miles every day through the Sussex countryside. 
He needed a winter bike. None of his other bikes had mudguard mounts, so he's found this Le Monde Popra disc on eBay mm. for £225. That's a bargain, isn't it? Yeah. He says he actually rode it home. Yeah. Um, so he's gone to work upgrading it, getting it ready for winter. Carbon rims on winterized hubs, um, polished mud guards to match the crown on the fork, carbon seat posts, Brooks saddle, touring pedals so he can ride Ooh. in flats or cleats. Um, what else has he got? 11 speed group set to it's get rid a, of the exposed it's a proper, cables. Proper winter tool, that yeah. isn't it? I love All those for big under 600 tires. quid. That's the, I mean, that's the thing there. That is, um, you know, arguably not quite as pretty no. as Jason Payne's restoration, but done on a budget. Whereas yeah. Jason Payne has spent an undisclosed sum. Yeah, maybe on, it was a lot. Yeah, I mean, might not have been, but I mean, it, it's, uh, it, I would guess it's been quite a bit. Yeah. But, um, I yeah. quite like the polished mud guards on this. Yeah, the, yeah, the chrome mud cool. I don't see chrome mud guards too often. Mm. Cool. I guess you've got to maintain those, they'll lose their shine quite quickly yes. in winter. Um, well, both brilliant upgrades, but it's not up to us. So uh, you vote, click on the link, and you decide who wins. It's time now for the Bike Vault, where you use the GCN app to submit pictures of your bikes, and we judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, Alex will ring the bell and they're forever committed to the vault. You can also play along at home and vote in the app yourselves. First up though, we have Anamadithi Ready. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> They've submitted their Pinarello Paris. What do you make of that, Alex? Really like it. The colour stands out for me. I'm a big fan of the colour. They've aligned the wheel valves. We're in Biggie Smalls. I like the way that the white look pedal matches the white on the bike. I think they've um, gone a little bit overkill on the um, drink bowl situation, if I'm honest. Those bottles are outrageous. Also, I, I, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful bike. I can't get over, though, the jaunty angle of the front wheel. And also, that post, which is just ever so slightly encroaching into the picture and yeah. covering up the front portion of the wheel, it's a nice. It's a nice. Yeah. Next up. Next up, we have got, so I've got to scroll down a bit here, Jill Teo with their S-Works Tarmac SL6, um, which I think is pretty cool. That is, I'll tell you what. The background. Cracking depth of field in that photo. I, um, that's very artistic. I'm, yeah. I'm liking that, that sort of dilapidated wooden pier or whatever it is in the background that's sort of been eaten by the ocean. This one stands out as a, as a good one in my eyes so far. A couple of small, small errors, which we might have to slightly overlook being the you know, no, no Biggie Smalls, valve's not quite there. Yes, valve's not quite there, Biggie Smalls not there, but the chain is very clean. The um, bar tape's wowing me, to be honest. Yes, the tyres aren't aligned with the valves on the wheels either, but these are minor infractions. That yeah. is a beautiful bike. I also like his big Teo name sticker that he's got on there. And that bar tape, I agree, that is... I had something very similar that to that very over cool. winter, and I, I really rated it. I'm going super nice on that, despite I'm, the minor infractions. I'm 100% going super nice on Ring that. Ring that so. bell, my friend. Uh, next is from Selwyn Embe, who ha uh, has these, uh, well, they've done this Bianchi Aria. Um, what do you make of that? With a nice Cracking big colour again. Yes. That is a beautiful bike, presented well. DT Swiss, um, I think they're the ARC wheels on there. Nicely orientated, tyre logos perfectly aligned. Biggie Smalls, ticking all the boxes. I mean, I don't know about you, but... Keep it simple, I think super, super nice. nice, yeah. Super nice. Again. Good work. Making our life easy. Yeah. Who have we got next? Next up, we have got C. Cole McDaniel with That's New a, Bike Day. a very American name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got a Cervelo... Yeah. Uh, it's a, sort of it's a Spiro, yeah. yeah. The newer Spiro. Very good. It came out this year. I mean, that's it's a good setup. I like the uh, the envy stem and seat post. I think also gold chain. I have to yeah. fist pump through oh, the, yeah. the through shield. The, through the shield. Um, and uh, power meter, very white tires. Yes, one by four. So those those white tires are. Uh, that's, that's you can't have ridden there to get that picture. Not have kept the tires that clean. Yeah, ISM saddle as well. Interesting choice. Super I, flared bars. Yeah, you can't really see them in that picture, but um, 
Do you know what? I'm actually a big fan of that. I think that's a really, I think that's a really cool bike. It's a bit different. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna hit it with a super nice. Yeah. Are you, are you green? Are you green? Yeah, I will. I was on the fence with this one, but yeah. I think I don't want to try and undermine you with your super nice. Yeah, so it's, it's... I really do. I'm, I was on the fence, but yeah? you've, you've won me over. Yeah. Next up, Jason Latore, uh, who says they've got their Scott Addict RC Pro. It's a pretty brand new bike. Also, he's updated it with some Hunt wheels. Um, they're the um, the Hunt Limitless wheels that we used in the Coast to Coast. Well, well, you and Hank. With the rude hubs. The rude hubs. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh! That is rude! Uh, nice P0 tan wall tires on there as well, but the logos aren't aligned. What are you saying about this? That's, oh, I'll tell you what, that is in the background there as well. That's the um, the, thingamy, the thingamy jig, the uh, Tapan Z bridge in uh, Hudson River. Didn't doubt you'd know that, to be honest. Yeah, well, it's the new Tapan Z bridge. Oh. Uh, the, uh, the other one was demolished. Yeah. The new upgraded That's one. That's the upgrade. <laughs> Maybe it should have been a hot tech. <laughs> That's the upgrade bridge. It's, I mean, it's a pretty impressive bridge, isn't it? I mean, what a feat of civil engineering that that bridge is. Um, yeah. Whilst I do like this bike, I'm not sure it's quite worthy of a super nice. The bottles are annoying me. Yeah. That, that bridge is good though, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. That's a fantastic bridge. Anyway, next. Um, Shah, Shah Rom Abdullah. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good go at that one. I think I've got that right. Um, check this out. Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod. Wow, 2018 bike. What do you make of that bad boy? It's the old high mod with the yeah. classic straight top tube. Lightweight Meilenstein. They look like they're Obermeyers on there as well. We've got a nice zip stem on there. Fabric, Just, yeah, I, fabric I think, saddle. Wow. Black KMC chain, very stealthy. Uh, SRAM Red uh, 22 on there as well, so very light. Apparently, this is just 5.56 kilograms. I wouldn't want to disagree with that, to be honest. However, there's, a, there's an issue here, isn't there? Yeah. It on. doesn't have pedals in it. Uh, there's no pedals, and it appears to be in a shop, which means that it, it looks like it's not, I can't, we can't confirm or, you know, how do we not know that's not just a bike in a shop you've taken a picture of? Yeah, he might have just gone in and said, show me your most expensive bike and can I take a picture of yeah. it? Yeah. Um, we need to see it outside, like being ridden. Or proof or of purchase. Yes, proof of purchase, a picture of a receipt. <laughs> So I think I can only be a nice. The yeah. fact that it's not got pedals on and it's in a shop um, is, is casting too much doubt for that yeah, to be a Yeah, we've got nice. to score it down for that. Yes. So it's just a nice, unfortunately. Oh, more bike vault next week. That's nearly it for this week's show. But before we go, if you want a bargain, head over to the GCN shop. That's right, Black Friday is nearly upon us and we've got loads of amazing deals happening, including up to 40% off this awesome special edition, limited edition hoodie that I'm wearing. Once they're gone, they're gone, but we've got loads of other deals happening. And I've heard on the grapevine that there's gonna be a big exclusive GCN offer in the shop as well over the weekend. So stay tuned on social media for, for that. I hope you enjoy this show. And if you have, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. See ya.